You may be familiar with the pendulum. It's one of the simplest examples that we have of oscillatory motion. On our engineering course, we should be able to describe the mathematics behind this sort of motion and also describe the more advanced pendulum system that I've got in my hand here. So I've got a pendulum moving backwards and forwards and attached to that at the other end is a heavy mass. If I was to leave go of this mass, what do you think would happen? As you can see, the pendulum is actually wrapped around my finger there. Hi, I'm Dr. Paul McKay. I'm an academic tutor of maths and physics, and I'm also a module leader of mechanics and of engineering materials on the International Year One Engineering course here in Two Newcastle University. What I'm going to show you today is just a brief introduction to the importance of oscillations in the structures and machines that you yourself may build one day and design as future engineers. So here we have another example of oscillatory motion. It may just look like a ruler over the edge of a bench, but in engineering, this is what we call a cantilever. And what it is, is a beam which extends over an edge. Now, those of you going into civil engineering may study bridges, and bridges may be an example of a cantilever. When the bridge is exposed to a force at a particular frequency, then it will start to vibrate. And that may be important when traffic moves across the bridge and causes it to oscillate up and down at a particular frequency. Which of these factors do you think the frequency of those vibrations might depend upon? And when I say the frequency of vibrations, what I mean is how many times does it oscillate up and down every second? And the factors that it depends upon include the dimensions of the beam and the material that the beam is made from. So there are special modes of vibration in materials which we can investigate as well. If I take this plastic bar, then you can imagine that it flexes one way like that and then in reverse. And it could go backwards and forwards in that manner, oscillating to and fro. Now there's a point in the middle halfway along which does not move at all, and we call that a nodal point. Now what we can do is we can extend this idea from a one-dimensional object into two dimensions in the experiment I'm going to show you now. Now the equipment that you'll need for this experiment is an oscilloscope, a vibration generator, a signal generator, and a pot of sand. So over here we have a signal generator, which passes a signal to the vibration generator. When it does that, the metal plate on top will start to oscillate at that same frequency that we sent. And to measure those oscillations, we'll use this oscilloscope. So we'll take some measurements in just a moment. I'm going to now put some sand onto the plate. And once I turn that on, that sand, when we get to that particular frequency that's special that we're investigating, will form into a particular shape. So when you think about the flexing of the plastic bar that we had before, there was a point that did not move. That point in two dimensions now has become a line. Can you think what shape that might be? Well, let's find out. Okay, so I turn it on now. And if I adjust the frequency just right, then you can see that a circle is formed on the plate. Now we're quickly going to take some measurements. So if we look at the oscilloscope, what we need to measure is the distance from the peak of one wave to the peak of the next one. You can see that the distance is one, two, three, four squares along, and the time base, which is this dial down here, is set to a half a millisecond per square. So we'll use those values now to do some calculations. Okay, so we're going to use those values that we've just found from the oscilloscope to do some calculations now. And what we're trying to find is the frequency of those oscillations. So the first thing we need to do is find the time period. So we had two pieces of information from our experiment. The other piece of information which we got from the dial of the oscilloscope was the time base. And that was set at 0.5 milliseconds. So that's 0.5 times 10 to the minus 3 seconds. And to find the time period, then all we do is we multiply those values together. So the time period, which is how long one oscillation lasts, is four 
times 0 0.5 times 10 to the minus 3, which is 2 times 10 to the minus 3 seconds. The frequency is inversely proportional to the time period and it's given by this equation. So the frequency f is equal to 1 divided by the time period. So if we put those values in, we get 1 divided by 2 times 10 to the minus 3. If we move the 10 to the minus 3 to the numerator, that becomes 10 to the plus 3, which is 1000. And that equals 500 hertz. Now if we were designing, say, a tumble dryer, what we've got to look out for are special frequencies like this, because some of them may cause the tumble dryer to resonate, which is where the oscillations get out of control. So if you're looking to be an engineer, these are the sort of principles that you will apply in the courses, and hopefully you'll see that when you join us here at Into.